So what we're going to do first is uh, we're going to take and assemble one of the side panels. You can tell the top from the bottom. You have the little holes here, two holes here, two holes here. You have a caster hole in the bottom. Take and attach this top side brace. Uh, this will be oriented like this. There's four little pilot holes here for the for the drawer glide. And then we have two more little holes here for the L brackets, which are later used to attach the top. Uh, this is going to be flush at the top. The holes go toward the top. And we're going to use one and a quarter number eight screws. And I'm going to attach the L brackets with a five eighths number eight. That's a little bit uh, bigger screw than the ones that attach the glides. Uh, you'll notice that the L brackets have a hole and a slot and then one side has a slot. Uh, we're going to use the slotted one and attach the L bracket to the top of that little brace we just put in there. Now you're going to do exactly the same thing with the other side panel. Now, it depends on which side in some cases where you just have a, uh, one feature of a handle or a, say a spice rack and you want to put it on the left side or the right side, this is when you determine which side to put it on because your glide. If you look, you're going to have little hardware packs that are packed separately and uh, for attaching to the cabinet, uh, usually use 5 eighths number 7, but they're in the little pack. Uh, in this particular case, the back of the glide, this is the back away from the wheel there, is going to line up with the back of this um, brace here, and you'll see that two of the pilot holes line up. Uh, you might find a couple others that line up, but you want to make sure the important thing is that it's pretty much flush with this back brace here. We'll do exactly the same thing with the other side. Okay, this is what your side panel should look like at this point. Okay, now we're going to take the back panel, the biggest panel you have. It may have a little hole at the top here. That's not used on this model or any of the models that I mentioned. And we're going to attach the side panels with one and three quarter inch uh, machine screws and nuts. We're going to push the machine screw through the edge of the back panel. Got the little hex nut right on the tip of my finger and push it against the side here. So you can see this. Okay. Push it against the side of the access hole there. Then I'm going to take the screwdriver and if you have a manual screwdriver. This is easy. Okay, we've attached both side panels with a one and three quarter inch uh, machine screws and nuts. And uh, this is what you should have, exactly what it should look like at this point. Okay, now you're going to take the cart top. You're going to invert it with the holes. There's four pilot holes in that with the pilot holes up on a nice smooth surface. And then you're going to position those L brackets that we put on the side panels a little bit earlier. And if you'll notice, there's four pilot holes. And we're going to just uh, adjust this assembly. Now, if you remember, the L brackets had uh, a hole and a slot. We're going to put the screws through the hole in this application, all four of them, and line them up and start them into the four pilot holes and uh, you're going to be using the 5 8 number 7 screws and, uh, and you'll tighten it down and then you'll have your basic assembly for the frame and the top in place. Okay, now we're going to attach the front braces. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is going to put a pin in the end of each one of them. Some of these pins will just go in easily. Others you may have to take and hit them in with a hammer, that went in nice and easy. The only thing that pins do is it keeps the brace from turning. It uh, doesn't really have any other function than to keep that brace from turning. The top brace, we're going to install that 
the block's going to be facing up or towards the bottom of the card. Um, you also see the little holes here. That's for the uh, door pins. Okay. So we're just going to take that and insert the pin in the slot in the leg. And then on the side here, here again, we're going to use these machine screws, one and three quarter inch machine screws. Bring the brace down. Okay, we're doing a little door prep. Uh, going to put the magnet plate on the uh, right door. I've got them reversed here. If you notice that up above the uh, handle holes, there's just one little pilot hole there, and that's where the plate's going to go. You take the, the very small flathead screw that's in the magnet pack. These little bumps are going to go toward the wood at the top of the door. You want to screw that in real well because you don't want the magnet to hit on the top, otherwise you won't get a real good fitting. Now the next thing I'm going to do is you notice the left door has three pilot holes down the inside edge there. And this is the uh, spacer stick, the door spacer that blocks out any space between the two doors. And uh, we're going to attach those with 5 8 number 8 screws. Countersink goes up. That's a little ringed out area there. This is a good time to put the handles on. Two holes there, you use those uh, shorter machine screws. Okay, now we're going to put the uh, doors into the cabinet. We're going to take the longest pins, the one and a half inch pins, put one at each end. It's okay if they're loose. Okay. Line the pin, put the one and a half inch pins in. Over the top of the block, and I'm just going to put my thumb on it, 
and open the door, and then the magnets in the proper position. Then I'm going to secure it with these two little brown screws that came with the magnet pack. Okay. still inverted, we're going to put the uh, one inch pins in to support the shelves. There's two in the side panel near the bottom here, near these wheels. That's going to hold the bottom shelves. And then I'm going to put the uh, four pins for the middle shelf. If you'll notice there's two sets of holes here. Uh, you sort of have your choice on how high you want that middle shelf and you can always adjust it later by pulling the pins out with a pair of pliers or uh, just a claw hammer will also pull them out very easily. And so in uh, this particular application I'm, I'm just going to put the pins in for the middle shelf. I'm going to use the uh, bottom set of pins which will be the set of holes that are closest to the wheels and uh, then we'll proceed from there. Okay, now we're going to insert the shelves. Uh, this is the bottom shelf. It doesn't have any finished banding anywhere. It's just a little bit larger than the middle shelf. What we're going to do is we're going to position this in place, turn it up so that the back of the shelf rests on the back two pins. We'll drop it down. It catches on the back of the door. We'll just close it falls into place. With this one, there's a nice finished edge on that. That's going to face out. That's for your middle shelf. And angle that in. And then that goes in place nicely. The last thing we have to do is assemble the drawer and insert the drawer. So we'll assemble the drawer next. All right, now we're going to assemble the drawer. Take the drawer back two holes, two holes, slot for the drawer bottom. Then I'm going to attach the drawer sides with one and a quarter inch number eight screws. There's two pilot holes in the back. This goes towards the front of the, the drawer. I'm going to attach those where we are at this point. I'm going to take the best side of your drawer bottom and have that face up. I'm going to just slide that right down. Good. Make sure that it fits into the top. And then we're going to attach the drawer front. The drawer front has what is called a cam system. We have a separate video on how to do the cams, but basically you've got two handles for the drawer handle and then you have a hole on either side for the cams. If you notice the cam post have two sets of threads. Smaller threads, larger threads. The smaller threads are going to go completely into the wood leaving the larger threads above. So we'll, we'll do that on both ends. Okay. And we're going to insert the cams into these access holes here. If you notice the cams uh, has a little arrow. That's the way that you're going to be turning that. But more importantly, on the little square here, there's a little uh, one little arrow, and that's going to point toward this post. That will let you uh, align them properly so when you get ready to tighten them down, you can tighten them down and it will be a, a real good fit. So I'm going to uh, put these in place and they fit fairly snug. We'll make sure that in this case the arrow is pointing up because the post is going to come down through here. Then we're going to insert the post on either side to make sure that the bottom, the drawer bottom is in place. Okay, so once you get the uh, post seated, I think it's easier to take a flat blade uh, screwdriver and we're going to just insert that into the end of the cam. I'm going to turn that clockwise and what happens is that 
slot in the cam to go tighten right against that post. Okay, now I'm going to put the drawer glides on. Get right over. This one has uh, three holes punched in it. We're going to butt the guide right up to the back of the drawer front there. And you should see two pilot holes through there. And then you take the little pack of screws and it's packed separately there and it says use on the drawer side glides. Normally they're 5 8 number 6. But okay, then we'll put the drawer in. We've got to hip the front down a little bit. Wheels over top of the wheels of the cabinet. Lift it up and slide it in place. Now the last thing we have to do is to put the little wooden disc in. You notice the little wooden discs have a little grain on them. I like to align that with the grain in the wood. Uh, before you put those in though, you might want to just go back and tighten up the eight machine screws because once you cover them up, it's pretty hard to, to tighten them up. So this is a good time to tighten those up, make sure they didn't come loose during the assembly or loosen up a little bit. And if you ever need to, Remove these, you can always take a knife blade under the edge and just sort of pry out and they'll come out. But um, these are tapered so they'll stay in real well. Uh, you don't want to mark them. You might want to just put a little piece of plastic or something and hammer it in place so you don't get any hammer marks on them. You repeat that with all of the, uh, the discs and then you've got a nice cart work with. Some, like I said, will have a spice rack on this side instead of the handle or handle on the spice rack or a backsplash. Those are very easy to put on.